Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Objects 11 for part 4 of Module 1. And we've got four problems. Get smallest, get largest, get all but last, and get element. of. And they're all basically uh, arrays that are inside of objects. So we're going to have those edge cases that come with all of them, with if the property at the given key is not an array, and if there is no property at the given key, it should return undefined. Uh, so let's get started. If object at key is equal to undefined, we're going to return undefined. Undefined. If array dot is array of object at key uh, is equal to false, we know we do not have an array where the problem is assuming we have an array, so they want us to return undefined. Uh, if the array is empty, it should return undefined. Mm, let's just add that one in. So we'll say if object at key, which is how we access the uh, inputted array because it's an array that's located inside of an object at a given key. Um, to be sure, you want to be very careful about identifying this key with this key because they are very different. This is a key that's actually spelled key, which is why this is inputted as K-E-Y as a string. And this OBJ actually refers to this object here. So these are arguments and refer to a call of the function. These are parameters and are part of the definition of the function, which is why we say object at key rather than object at key in quotes or object dot key. So anyway, object at key dot length is equal to zero, and that's going to be true if the input array is uh, empty and they want us to return undefined in that case. So now that we've sorted out our edge cases, uh, essentially we want the smallest element, so we're going to follow the pattern that we did for the previous versions of this. We're going to set the smallest element equal to the first element in the array. And it may or may not be the smallest element. All this is going to do is give us something against which we're going to check all the rest of the elements in the array. You also want to consider that this is probably not necessarily going to be a length 3 array. It's going to be just an array of numbers. So uh, there's one where you have to get the smallest element out of three elements, somewhere in there in the prep course. And uh, that methodology is not necessarily going to work exactly. Although if I think, if I remember correctly, I put those into an array just to, just to make it easier. Um, so most of what I just said forget, but the part you should remember is we're setting smallest element equals to the first element in the input array. Then we're going to iterate over the rest of the array, which means that i is going to start at 1. i is going to be less than object at key dot length. i is going to increment each time. Then we've got an if statement. We need to check to see if the current value, object at key at i, is less than smallest element. In the event that it is, we have a new smallest element, so we need to reassign smallest element to be whatever the current value inside of the array that we're iterating over, which is object at key at i. After we've done all of this, smallest element will contain the smallest element in the array. And I think I have that copy and pasted. Nope. Return smallest element. So we have our edge cases. We set the first element to be the smallest. We iterate over the rest. In the event that a current element is smaller than our smallest element, then obviously our smallest element is no longer the smallest element. So we're going to reassign it to be whatever the current element is. And then finally, after the iteration is completed, the smallest element contains whatever the element from the original array that is smallest is. God, there's only so many ways you can say smallest element. Anyway, run the tests, and we're in good shape. So it might be boring at this point to continually type out those edge cases. You should continue to do so. I am not going to continue to do so. so we're going to copy and paste all of these because they transfer quite nicely from the previous problem. Now we're going to do the largest element. So we'll say largest rather than largest element because it might be easier, right? We're going to set that equal to the first element in our array. And you might be thinking, but that's what we did for smallest. The way we find the largest element is to take each element and compare it against the next one. Anytime we see a larger one, we reassign largest. So it doesn't matter what we assign largest to, provided that we don't assign it to something that is smaller than all of the elements in the array. Meaning if we set largest to be zero, and these were the elements in the array, we would never find a smaller, excuse me, said this backwards. We don't want to set largest to be something that would large, <clears throat> Excuse me. We do not want to set largest to be an element that is larger than all of the elements in the array. And so we could do that by making, 
by saying if, if the largest element we just assign it to be 50, this would be a bad idea, but let's say that we did, if we iterate over the rest of these, we're never going to find one that is larger than that. So even though 4 is the largest, because it's not larger than what we initially assigned largest to be, we're going to be in trouble. So what we need to get around that is just pick one of the elements. So if we're going to pick them, why not pick the first one? After we've done that, we're going to iterate <clears throat> over the rest of the array, which is i is equal to 1. i is going to be less than object at key uh, dot length. Then i is going to increment each time. For each iteration, we're going to check to see if the current element in the array, which is object at key at i, is greater than largest. In the event that it is, largest now needs to be reassigned to whatever object at key at i is, meaning whatever the current element is. And then finally, we're going to return largest. So edge cases, set an initial value, iterate over the rest. Anytime that largest is no longer the largest because we found one that is bigger, because the current element is greater than largest, we reassign largest to be the current element. Finally, after the iteration is over, we're going to return largest. And we're in good shape. Get all but the last element of property. Uh, so the edge cases are not identical, but we're going we're gonna to copy and paste them and then we're going to adjust them. So you might notice that instead of returning undefined here, we're going to be returning an empty array. So we'll click on all the undefines and return an empty array instead. But the principle here, if there's no property at the given key, if the property at the given key is not an array, or if the property at the given key is an array but is empty, we can sort those out rather quickly, so that's why we're doing that. Get all but last element of property. So there's a couple ways to do this. One would be to iterate over the array here and push everything except for the last element. And we can do that with a selective for loop, meaning variable i is equal to zero, and then i is less than the array length minus one, which would have us iterate to all of the array values except for the last one. However, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> I want to be able to return the array directly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply pop. Pop is going to remove the last element of the array, and then we can re return the array inside of the object directly. So we'll say object at key dot pop, which is going to remove the last element of the array located inside of the object at key. Then we're going to return the object at key, which is how we reference the array itself. Edge cases, pop the last one off, return the array. And we're in good shape. Get element of array property. So for this one, we have undefined for all of our edge cases. So let's jump back up to our edge cases from this one. Again, a really, well, I'll probably suggest in that. At this point, you're either right number or you're not, and you know why you should be, or you know why you're not. So here are the edge cases. Again, you should probably write them. But if you don't feel like it, you can copy and paste. Um, what do they want us to do? Get element of array property. So we're gonna return. And here's that one where it's if that, uh, if the given index is out of range, but we know that if we ask an array for an index or for a value at an index that the array doesn't contain, we're gonna get back undefined anyway, so we don't need an extra edge case for this. It's just gonna be object at key, which allows us to access the array in question, at whatever index, which is a parameter they're asking for. So now that we've got that, we run the tests, we are correct, we are super happy. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.